Queensland Railway C-17 class. These locomotives were 480s, sometimes called 12-wheelers because, well, duh. And they were operated by the Queensland Railways in Australia. Built as an improved version to the C-16s, they were exceptional locomotives for their era and lasted a significant amount of time. They were continually constructed between 1920 and 1953, and they weren't actually withdrawn until the end of steam on Australia's railways. A total of 227 were produced, and out of those, 25 have been preserved, which is a pretty impressive amount of preservation. Some of them are even still in running condition. So if you've ever been to a heritage railway in Australia, you may have ridden on a train that was pulled by one. British Rail Class 55. Am I a joke to you? I'm just asking. Serious question. Constructed by English Electric in 1961 and 1962, the Class 55s are also known as the Deltics, named after their original prototype, the DP-1 Deltic. And even though the notion that they were built in the 60s might be a red flag, and it is, much like the Class 37s that we discussed last time, the Class 55s were phenomenal locomotives. And it's an interesting note that English Electric was also responsible for the Class 37s, which leads me to believe that English Electric may have been the only manufacturer in the UK at that time that at least had some sense of what they were doing. The Deltics, at the time of their creation, were actually the most powerful diesel locomotive in the world, with a power output of 3,300 horsepower. They also had an official maximum speed of 100 miles per hour, or 160 kilometers per hour, but it was apparently frequently exceeded, especially in their later years, and they were recorded going 117 miles per hour, or 188 kilometers per hour. And on a downgrade, they could apparently get to 125. Only 22 were ever made, but they were used for express passenger service on the East Coast Main Line. They were incredibly good at their job, and they, along with the 37, stood out among the many horrible diesels that British Rail put into service during their ill-fated modernization plan. But then that leads to the real question, why were they withdrawn at all? The 37s are still in service now. Why were so few of the Deltics built, and why were they withdrawn in the 80s? Well, to begin with, a lot of their work was overtaken in 1978, when the Inner City 125 came into being, which was a train set made up of two Class 43s. The Deltics were put on secondary service, and this made them a lot less efficient overall. Their engines were good, but they were very complicated, requiring specialty maintenance, and their operating costs were considered too high. Additionally, they were non-standard. British Rail was really starting to cut back on the small, non-standard fleets they had, and the Deltics fit right into that category. They were taken out of service, but not immediately. They actually kept using them until they broke, quite literally wearing them down, and only then withdrawing them, choosing not to fix them. Which is kind of a brutal strategy when you think about it. Goodness, British Rail, chill out. But don't worry, the Deltics are actually incredibly popular among British Rail fans, and in fact they've been one of my most requested topics to discuss when it comes to British Rail diesels because, again, they were actually very good. Six were put into preservation, and there's also two cabs sitting around. Most were saved by the Deltic Preservation Society, a non-profit group of enthusiasts that, well, the name kind of implies what they do, they wanted to preserve the Deltics, and succeeded in that. Some are still under maintenance and repair, but one, number 55019, or D9019, which is named Royal Highland Fusilier. Fusilier? Fusilier. Yes? No? That one. It's currently operational, so you might be able to ride in a train pulled by one still. That's always fun. The Norfolk and Western Railway Class J. Constructed during the tail end of steam on American railroads, these 484 Northern Streamline steam locomotives are considered some of the best steam locomotives that America ever produced. The J class are famous, having a high class and handsome design, and considered by many American rail fans so it was one of the best looking locomotives ever made. But they weren't all aesthetics. They were powerful, very fast, and they're considered one of the most reliable and efficient steam locomotives ever. In their heyday, they could run as many as 15,000 miles a month, and the Norfolk and Western Railway was mountainous, so they put in a lot of work to get those miles. Sadly, they couldn't outlast the impending dieselization of America's railways. In the late 50s, Norfolk and Western started experimenting with new diesel locomotives. They leased some EMDs, E6s, E7s, and E8s, for testing purposes, and found they were simply cheaper to operate. The Class J's were retired for passenger service, and put on freight service until they were all retired between 1958 and 1959. Only one has survived into preservation, number 611, and 611 has been through it. 
She's sometimes called the Spirit of Roanoke, as well as the Queen of Steam. She was going to be scrapped along with her sisters, but attorney and rail fan W. Graham Clayton Jr. actually managed to convince Norfolk and Wester to donate 611 to the Roanoke Transportation Museum in Roanoke, Virginia instead, and she sat on static display for quite a long time. Between 1981 and 1994, she was actually removed from static display by the Southern Railway and put back into service as a part of their steam program. During this time, Norfolk and Western and the Southern Railways would actually merge to form what is now known as Norfolk Southern, and she would continue to do excursion runs until 1994. When that steam program ended, she was sent back to the museum, which is now known as the Virginia Museum of Transportation. She was sent at various places until 2013, when the museum launched a campaign, Fire Up 611, an attempt to raise $3.5 million by the end of October so they could restore 611 to operating conditions. Norfolk Southern themselves actually donated $1.5 million for the job, and she was finally put under steam again in 2015. But she still runs to this day. The Union Pacific FEF series. Yet another small group of 484 Northern-type steam locomotives. Only 45 were produced, but the FEFs are top-tier steam locomotives, right up there with the aforementioned J-Class. Union Pacific ran these girls really hard. They could put in about 14,000 miles a month, and in particular, they were capable of going 100 miles per hour on the regular. But because they showed up so late towards the end of steam, being built between 1937 and 1944, Union Pacific never really knew how fast the FEFs could go. A former manager of the Union Pacific Steam Program once commented on them, saying that, Although it is stated that the UPFEF series were designed to safely operate at 120 miles per hour, no one really knows how fast the final 484 could go. The last FEF-3 was never actually retired, and he's right. There were several improvements to the FEF model. There was the FEF-1, the FEF-2, and the FEF-3. The FEF-3's potential is debatable. And it's a weird thing for me to read about, because among all the preserved FEFs, there are four of them. There's one FEF-1, number 814, there's one FEF-2, number 833, and there are two FEF-3s, 838 and 844. Now, 838 generally serves as a set of spare parts for 844, because 844 still serves the Union Pacific Railroad now. No, seriously, unlike all of her sisters and every other steam locomotive on her railway, and pretty much every railway in North America, number 844 was never actually retired. She's served Union Pacific since December 1944 to this day, running excursion services as part of Union Pacific Steam Program. And just in case anyone wants to ask, I did look to see if 611 and 844 have ever been in the same place at the same time, and as far as I'm able to tell, no. But it'd be really cool if they were. I'm just saying. Pennsylvania Railroad Class GG1. Ah, here we are. Here we go. This is one of my biggest requests for the list, and I'll be real, you didn't have to request it. I know. These are one of my favorite classes of locomotives. GG1s are legendary. Built between 1934 and 1943, 139 GG1s were produced, and they were Phenomenal! They entered service in 1935 and weren't retired until 1983. 48 years of service the GG1s put in. And for electric locomotives, that's a substantial achievement. They were massive pieces of equipment and capable of pulling a significant amount of weight and looking good while doing it. There are probably other examples of other electric locomotives that could do what the GG1s did technically better, but the GG1 is iconic. It has a legacy here. It became synonymous with the Pennsylvania Railroad. Along with the K4s, the GG1s were one of the most common sight on their lines. Out of all the GG1s, 15, as well as the original prototype, were put into preservation, although none are operational. The reason for this is that the main transformers of the GG1s used PCBs in the insulating oil, which are violently toxic and had to be disposed of due to safety concerns. Plus the fact that they're so big and require pantograph lines that it's hard to find a place to use them effectively anymore. Even if you could rebuild one to work with modern equipment, it would still be a significant undertaking and very expensive. At this point, I expect them to stay on static display, but at least they have that. Till next time, this is Darkness, and I bid you all a fond farewell.